Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into music implementation using FMOD Studio. In this video, we're gonna look at the concept of tying automation to our parameters so that we can actually fade layers in and out rather than constantly having to jump to a new section of the event. If you haven't watched the previous video, now would be a good time to go back and check that one out. Okay, so here you can see the same music event that we started with last time. Um, I've got just a single audio track and a master track in here and my two parameters, our enemies parameter, which counts from zero up to a maximum of 30, and our player health, which starts at 100, and as the player takes damage, works its way back down to zero, at which point, obviously, uh, the player is dead. So to get started here, I'm gonna drag in a clip that I created that I want to use as my explore or idle loop, um, and this one's called percussion. So I'm gonna drop that onto audio track one, and now's a good time to go ahead and name that. And we can take a quick listen. Okay, so before I go any further, I'm definitely gonna wanna put in a, so before I go any further, I'm going to want to put in a tempo marker here um, so that FMOD knows the tempo that I'm working at. So I'll right click in the logic track and choose add tempo marker. And all of these clips are at a tempo of 110. So I'll just double click, type in 110. And now our grid will automatically be conformed to 110 beats per minute. And then just like we did last time, I'm gonna right click on the clip and choose new loop region. Drag that down a little bit so that this region will loop. And we'll go ahead and add our marker in here as well. So I'll right click, add marker. And I'll double click in the marker and call that intro. Okay, so before we move on, um, let's go ahead and set up the transition that's gonna switch us over to combat. So I'll go ahead and make the marker for combat. And we'll put that at bar eight. And then I'm gonna right click over here near the end of the intro section and choose transition to combat. And just like we did last time, I'm going to go ahead and add a condition that ties to our enemy's parameter. And anytime enemy goes above one, which I could just type in here, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump from our intro uh, to combat. And we can test that out. Okay, great. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna start building this combat section. Uh, I'm gonna keep the percussion part that I already have, so I'll just copy and paste that over. And then the base layer of combat, uh, sort of the lowest intensity of combat, is gonna be the percussion and a synth bass line. So I'm gonna right click here, add an audio track, I'll call this bass. I'll bring in the synth bass. And this one I'm actually gonna need to duplicate because it's just a two bar loop. So let's go ahead and put a loop region above this and we'll give it a listen. Okay, so now we're gonna actually get into um, working in layers here. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and make another audio track. This one is gonna be for our strings and winds. And I'll bring in that clip. Drop it in there, bar eight. And you can hear what that sounds like. Okay, so simple little string and wind part. Um, and here's the thing, we don't want that to actually play when we first transition over to combat, okay? What we wanna do is we wanna actually fade that in so that when our enemy count gets above a certain level, the strings and winds come in and we don't have to wait until the end of a bar or anything like that. So here's how I'm gonna do that. Um, where the volume control is on the strings and winds part, uh, we'll go ahead and turn that all the way down um, so that it will start uh, at minus infinity. And then I'll right click on that knob and I'll choose add automation. Okay, and you can see an automation lane comes up uh, below the main part of the track there. But here's the thing, I'm not actually going to adjust this here in the timeline. 
um, I'm actually going to jump over to the enemies parameter. Now, I'm, this is where I'm actually going to draw in the volume automation. Okay, so you can't really see it here, but there's a little line down at the bottom. I'll click in there to add a breakpoint. And then now we can actually see our enemy count across the top here. So that's what this is. It looks like time, but it's actually the value of the enemy's parameter. So here's what's neat about this. You can draw in automation like you would in a DAW, like Pro Tools or whatever, um, but instead of actually happening in time, which is what would happen if we put automation in the timeline, if we put it into the enemy's parameter directly, it doesn't follow time. It actually performs the automation as the enemy count increases or decreases. Okay, so here's what we wanna do. When we initially go into enemies, I want this to be off. So we know that that's gonna be at an enemy count of one. But once we get a second round of enemies and they start to stack up a little bit, let's say around four, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the strings in. Okay, so this will make sense when we look at it in the game, but I'm gonna add a breakpoint here, uh, maybe a little bit after three, and then I want this to come up to full volume by the time we reach four. So when we initially go to combat, this layer will be silent. But if we manage to have more than three enemies, so four or more, this layer is going to fade in. And there's one more little thing I'm gonna do here. I can set a maximum speed for this automation, which in FMOD is called the seek speed. Okay, and right now it's instantaneous. When that parameter changes from three to four, it's gonna be an instantaneous change. And obviously that's not what we want. So what I'm gonna do is set this seek speed value so that it can only change one unit every second. Okay, so I'll type one in here. And now you'll see if I play and I click over here to simulate the parameter going up, watch what happens. And it still may be a little too fast. So let's go ahead and change this to 0 0.5. Try that again. And we can actually go in and change the shape of this curve which can make it a little bit more musical. Um, and, you know, feel free to play around with that. Okay, so jumping back over to the timeline, um, I don't have to keep, I can hide this lane if it's taking up too much space on my screen, so I'll go ahead and hide that. So now we've got a combat loop that's going to happen. Uh, we're going to hear percussion and synth bass right from the very beginning. Uh, that's up to three bad guys. Once we hit four or more, strings and winds are going to fade in. But we have one more layer we want to add, so I'm going to right-click here, add another audio track, and this is our lead sound. So I'll grab that synth lead and bring it down in here. And you'll notice right away that this is a longer clip here. So I'm going to go ahead and double everything here. Okay, so now we have eight bars, and I know that seems like a really long time, and based on how we set things up last week, this would take a super long time to make the transition back to intro, but we have a trick up our sleeve that I'm going to get into in just a second here. Okay, so for the synth lead, I'm also going to um, set the volume so that it's starting at minus infinity. Right-click, add automation. Then I'll go ahead and click on the enemies tab again and we'll draw in some volume automation for the lead. So what I'll do here is, once again, add a breakpoint that starts us off uh, at minus 80, which is hopefully inaudible. And for this one, we're gonna wait until our enemy count gets above seven. So then what I'm gonna do is click on around a little bit past six, and then a little bit before seven. Bring this up. We'll go ahead and adjust the curve slightly. Maybe that'll help. Okay. And now the lead is going to fade in when we have more than six guys. So that's seven or more. And it's going to fade back out uh, when we fall below that. Okay. So let's go ahead and give that a listen. So I'm going to zoom out a bit here. So you can see that full range of zero to 30. Okay. So we'll start playback. And when we go up to four, we should get our strings.
And if we go above seven, our lead's gonna fade in. Okay, so let's jump back to the timeline. We still need to add the transition that takes us from combat back to the intro. Um, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a cool little trick here. Uh, I'm gonna right click in the logic track and I'm gonna create a transition region that goes back to intro. You'll notice that this looks a lot like a loop region. And I'm gonna resize that to be the exact size of our eight bars. And this is why having the correct tempo and meter in here is really, really important because watch what I can do with this. And normally, if I go ahead and add a condition here, um, for example, parameter condition enemies goes back to zero, um, this is actually going to jump instantaneously. It's not gonna wait uh, for a downbeat or anything like that. It's just gonna jump right away. Okay, so let's take a listen to what that would sound like. Okay, so it takes a second to actually get down there because of our seek speed. So again, we'll jump back up. And as the parameter slowly works its way down, we jump back. Okay, uh, but we can do something special with the transition region. You may have noticed down here, we can set the quantization interval. So I could say, um, the one I probably use the most is to jump on a bar. So you could say every one bar, check to see if that value is true. And if it is, then we're going to go ahead and make that transition. Um, so again, it's super important that your tempo is correct here, or uh, these quantization intervals are going to be meaningless. Um, so now you can actually see these thin green lines that appear below the transition region. And that shows you that you know at each bar, it's going to check the value of that parameter, and then it will jump back to the intro, okay? So let's take a listen to that. So I'll set my enemy value to two. Okay, so you can see it jumps right on the bar line. Okay, so yeah, I've set that seek speed pretty slow, so it, it does still take a minute to jump back. But remember, it'll be constantly changing as you're killing the bad guys inside the game. Okay, so that's how transition regions work. So now what we can do is um, we can go ahead and make our death uh, section here. So I'm gonna jump over, drop in a marker, and we'll call this death. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add another transition region uh, to our combat section. So right click in the logic track, transition region to death. And uh, let's make a little extra space for this here. And this one will connect to our health parameter. And when it reaches zero, we'll go ahead and make the jump to death. And again, I'm going to set the quantization interval to one bar. Now you can't really tell because the lines are on top of the lines for the uh, other transition region, but it's going to check every bar to see if that value goes down to zero. And if it does, it will then jump over to death. Okay, and then for death, I'm gonna need one more track here and we'll call this ending. And uh, we can go ahead and drag that up to the top just so we can see it. I'll grab the ending clip drag it in here, bump it up against death. Okay, and remember um, in this particular game, once we die, the scene is completely relaunched. So we don't wanna loop back and uh, go back to the intro or anything like that. Okay, so let's take a listen to that. Okay, so that gives you a pretty good idea of how this is all gonna work. Let's go ahead and take a listen inside the game. Okay, so here we are back in Unity, and let's go ahead and take a listen to our interactive score. Now for this first run through, I've kept the spawn speed for the enemies um, pretty slow. So we'll be able to get to combat and then back to intro. And then we'll uh, do a second run through with the spawn time sped up uh, faster. Okay, here we go. So 
you can hear it switch back to intro. So now I've sped up the spawn time a bit, let's go ahead and try it again. Okay, so there you have it. You can hear how we transition from the intro music uh, to combat, and then as more enemies are spawned, uh, additional musical elements fade in. Um, and then we can jump pretty quickly from combat to death uh, because it's just waiting for the next downbeat uh, to go ahead and make that transition. So I hope this was helpful. There's gonna be one more video coming that explores composed introductions and transitions. Um, so look for that in the next couple of weeks. And uh, thanks for watching.